What's up? The first two episodes of Friendship is Magic Season 5 brought a new sense of atmosphere for the franchise. The show never shied away from dealing with more adult imagery and portrayal of adult ideas, but they were never so apparent than in this opening two-parter. We'll get back to it later, but let's discuss some of the other aspects of the episode first. Spike decides to stay behind in the beginning of the episode to discuss hoofball cards with Big Macintosh. This happens for the sake of plot convenience, since the following adventure A doesn't need him and B since he doesn't have a cutie mark, Starlight's spell wouldn't affect him and he could be there to help the girls. Great, everything's clear, cool! Spike would compromise the plot and so he's missing from the episode. Everything for the needs of the story, I say. Plot convenience is okay, I would like to watch the story the writers wanted to tell and I really don't have the patience to watch minutes wasted from the episode that explains where a character is and why he or she can't intervene. If you ask me, I would have been okay with Spike just staying there asleep on the chair. The writers are including these explanations because they know that Bronies are watching. Children wouldn't ask where Spike is and I don't care. And despite that, some people still complain that the hoofball card explanation isn't good enough. Jeez. Despite the efforts of the crew of FIM, Twilight stays detached from the main five. Several times in the episode, when the girls lose their cutie marks and later when they get them back, they show her separately, as if she had more significance than any of the others. If you're going for the equal representation of the main six, like the ending suggests, then these scenes don't really help to support that. I'm okay with characters in the episode treating her differently, since that's realistic and it's part of her character, but there's no reason why the camera should focus on her more than the main five, since part of me, but no one cares more for her than the entirety of the other five. She doesn't really get lines for herself that aren't exposition, which doesn't help her character at all and just makes her seem bland. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. As a unit, the main six acted rationally and appropriately throughout the episode. Pinkie Pie and Rarity helped to support the humor in the episode, they both shined on that front, especially Rarity. They all got significant screen time, but the one who really carried the episode was Fluttershy. I always really liked her, she even was my favorite prony through the first two seasons. She's still up there, but I can't really remember when she got a chance last time to show why she's a great character. She starts to act out Twilight's plan, but later when she discovers the truth about Starlight, she becomes more proactive and she gets the ball rolling to free the entire town. The town accurately named Our Town, or Our Village, as Starlight calls it, is a society built around the philosophy of equalism. We learn that a cutie mark and the talents that come with it are what separates people in Equestria, and those who are trying to be equal get rid of that if they want to embrace that idea. In the episode, this is shown by the well-known communist slash socialist symbolism of people marching, singing a suspiciously stereotypical communist song, houses looking the same, the restaurant serving only one kind of food, and the clothing store only serving one kind of attire. We also don't see anyone paying for anything, so it's also possible that money is out of the equation, but I wouldn't be 100% sure about that, since maybe they just didn't think of showing money in this episode. Maybe this isn't a completely accurate representation of a utopian communist society, but it's clearly what the show is going for and it's very recognizable. The thing about otherwise talented people doing jobs that aren't suited for them and don't require any of their talents is a concept that immediately meets our objection. It's a fundamentally distressing idea, well represented in the stage play The Tragedy of Man, in which Michelangelo is forced to carve chair legs for his entire life that all have to look exactly the same, in a utopian future which isn't dissimilar to the one represented in this episode. Now let's see what Starlight's plan was here and what she was trying to accomplish and why, in a new segment I like to call What is her deal? So the unicorn Starlight Glimmer found a stick in the desert and then traveled to the mountains where she decided to hide her cutie mark and convince other ponies of different races to give up their special talents and live in a town with her where nobody is particularly good at anything. Why would she do that? 
What does she get out of this? The sense of superiority? She is a founder, and the town folk do respect her, and she is the only one who doesn't live in a house similar to the other ones. But this doesn't seem like the scheme of a power-hungry individual who's out for world dominance. She doesn't seem to want these ponies to suffer, she wants them to accept her way of thinking willingly. But this all looks rather personal. I got the feeling that those things we hear her say weren't just pulled out of her ass, she really wants things to be like that. She believes that different talents lead to bickering and misunderstanding, and special talents lead to boasting about said talents, which lead to making others feel inferior. That seems like someone speaking from experience. Now Starlight seems really talented with magic, she's able to manipulate cutie marks, which, demonstrated by earlier episodes in the series, is a remarkably high level of magic, so I find it unlikely that she used to be humiliated due to the lack of her abilities. So she was probably on the other end of the spectrum, gloating and boasting about her exploits, similarly to Trixie in season 1, driving people away from herself, which scarred her character going to the exact opposite direction, thinking that suppressing her abilities is the right solution. Interesting parallel to Twilight in the Ghostbuster episode again, and not the only one between Starlight and her. Starlight is showing the symptoms of someone really trying to redeem themselves. You will see people often who preach something rapidly, and then it's proven that they don't live by their words. That's usually when someone does believe in an idea but doesn't have the courage or ability to actually carry out the actions needed to live accordingly. Starlight didn't remove her own cutie mark, because for her it wouldn't make sense to be the only one with no talents, she needs a society where everyone is without cutie mark, thus making everyone equal, not more and not less than anyone else. But she also didn't remove it, because it would have been an irreversible step that she wasn't able to make. She also didn't erase any of her victims' cutie marks, which can mean that it's simply an impossible thing to do, which I think is very much likely, or she didn't want to do that irreversible thing to the other ponies who accepted her ways. I might have gone off to headcanon territory, and I apologize, I know this can be interpreted in a number of ways, and I am accepting everything until the show doesn't state something about Starlight's motives. In the end, Starlight Glimmer seemed to be a troubled, scarred, misguided character who can be redeemed. She didn't get a closure in the episode, so I'm hoping she will return. She seems to be part of the Twilight Sparkle, Sunset Shimmer, Starlight Glimmer triangle. Three unicorns who are all good with magic and all having a specific way of looking at magic and friendship, leading to different lifestyles and looking at things. Eventually, I believe, all converting to Twilight's ways, obeying the narrative message of the show, which is of course that friendship is magic and the two concepts are inseparable. The episode also shows that even if they get help, suppressed people ultimately have to help themselves. The episode introduced four residents of our town, Sugar Bell, Party Favor, Double Diamond and Night Glider. Sugar Bell and Party Favor were the more prominent of the four, they were all likeable, especially Sugar Bell, who was the leader of the rebellion, she was extremely cute, and she was just overall delight on the screen. They've done a good job at giving personality to the town, giving characters we can care about there, not like the Crystal Empire, where we still barely know anyone other than the royal family. The cutie map did a good job at kicking off the season, mostly setting up what's to come, with the device of the map, that will send the main six to adventures, and introducing a new, interesting villain. This episode didn't try to be too emotionally manipulative, and it wasn't a huge spectacle, like the other two parters, although there were some spectacular animations with the snow at the end. It told an intelligent and entertaining story with likeable character interactions. It was an okay start to the season, and it got me excited to see these characters again in regular episodes, mostly Rarity and Fluttershy. Tune in next time, take care.